What's up guys, this is the Photon Phantom here, coming at you with an educational video. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is the inverse square law, uh, a little bit about lighting optics, and uh, you know how to choose the right optics for your application. Um, then I'll get into um, some stuff I have on the horizon, and also some stuff I've done in the past. Um, learned a lot of mistakes, learned from a lot of mistakes. Um, also learn from a lot of success, so uh, we'll see how far into the video we get. But uh, what you're looking at here is a simulation of different um, different distances away from a uh, 100 watt light source. So this is assuming this light puts out 100 watts worth of light, not a light that you put 100 watts into and then you get you know 50 watts if you've got a really high efficiency LED you'll probably get 20 watts with a you know an HPS um, so at a distance of 1 meter I've got a surface area of 3.14 meters squared and that gives me an intensity of almost 32 watts per meter squared which is really high um, but as you can see as we double these so we go from one meter to two meters um, the surface area goes up by a factor of four and your intensity goes down by a factor of four so all the way out here at the end at 16 meters we're only at 0 0.12 watts per meter squared and uh, you can see the factor of four here um, anything that's not a factor of four is just a rounding error on my part um, but if we go equals this divided by this, it's going to be 4. This divided by this, it's going to equal 4. Um, so basically the inverse square law says if you double your distance, you have to divide your intensity by 4. And that applies to all optics no matter, well I guess except for lasers. Um, but all optics, no matter how narrow they get, um, right here I've simulated um, a bunch of different angles or angle angled lenses. Um, I got their own different orders here, but uh, so this is 170 degrees, um, and let's just call this blue to cayenne area your your Goldilocks zone, you know, where you want to put your plant. Um, you see at 120 degrees um, if you have a flat canopy and you put part of it in the Goldilocks zone um, you can imagine this right here is you know in the yellow zone so this be, would be getting way too much light and you'd be getting barely enough out here so 120 degrees not super ideal um, there are applications if you use a bunch of small LEDs you know if I had a PCB uh, printer I would probably use a bunch of low power LEDs and do it this way um, but this is why cobs are so much more um, popular in the DIY community because nobody wants to solder 250 LEDs to a board uh, by hand so this is a 90 degree lens uh, you can see the hemisphere out here is starting to flatten out a little bit. This wouldn't be too bad. Um, I definitely, I'd recommend a 90 degree lens to a lot of people. Um, out here I've got a 60 degree lens. I think this one's my favorite overall just as far as, um, you know, spread, intensity, um, the length of the Goldilocks zone, uh, what we're calling the Goldilocks zone. You'll notice as you um, as your optics narrow, it actually stretches the Goldilocks zone here too. So, you know, this cayenne area is equal to this cayenne area is equal to this cayenne area. So you you know, this is a really short distance compared to this. And I'm not even going to snap dimensions on this um, because it, it applies to all units. You know, you could say this is one inch right here and this would be about 8 inches so going from a 90 degree lens to a 10 degree lens increases your Goldilocks zone by 
about eight times, but you also have to be extremely further away, probably. I guess I'll snap the mention from this. So here I've got a distance of 210, and from a 90 degree lens standpoint, uh, I've got a distance of, something's wrong, so I've got a distance of 30 inches, so that's seven times further away. I bet that's exactly how much it stretches the Goldilocks zone by as well. So, um, you know, you, you really don't want to be growing a plant with this much light. I've done it before. They grow really tiny leaves because they don't need any light. Um, just, it's, it's not, not a good idea. Um, for like a Cree XML2 or, you know, smaller diodes, I would probably recommend um, 15, 20, 30 degree lenses. Um, just hang them high and I bet you'd get great results. Um, I actually have pictures of XML2 results. So this is an XML2 with no optics at 12 inches and this is in uh, hundreds of lux so this is 1400 lux right here and this is 24,000 lux right here with a 15 degree lens so there's no spread with this I mean it's dark outside of this 15 degrees and this has 120 degree spread or maybe it's past that it's probably 160 degree spread um, but it does fade towards the edges um, so I mean do with this data what you will, but this lens seems to be kind of a good idea. Um, let's see here. What else do I got? Oh, um, by the way, when I calculated all these, I tried to make the surface area of the uh, hemisphere down here this all the same, like roughly a thousand inches squared. So there's a thousand sixty. 1031, etc. 1054. So these are all within like 5% of each other um, surface area wise down here, which is, which means the same amount of flux would be going through each uh, hemisphere. Um, start this back over. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm thirsty. Fucking cotton mouth like a motherfucker. <sighs> so I've got a couple more minutes on this video. I'm gonna keep another 10 minutes. Um, these are some of the results I got recently with uh, just my foot candle lux meter and some different cobs and a discrete diode here. Um, this is a Cree CXB3590 6500K from the DD, no, from the BD bin, uh, the highest one they make, the 13,000 lumens, I think. Um, I ran all of these at 30 watts because this is a 30 watt driverless LED and I wanted to compare it to different cobs at 30 watts. Uh, this I didn't run at 30 watts because it's an XML2 and I would have blown it up. Um, but you can see um, the Vero 29 did pretty good with uh, 18,200 lux. The CXB 3590 with uh, the 6500K did the best with 21,000 lux at 12 inches. No optics. Um, this is a 3500K CXB3590 from CD bin, 
Uh, it ran at 20,500 lux at 12 inches. This is a CXB 37, CXA 3070. Um, I forget the color temp. I want to say 4,000. Uh, it ran at 16.5, which is not too shabby. Um, then I put a reflector on this uh, Vero 29 and it actually ran at 30,000 lux with, um, I think it's a 90 degree uh, LED IL. For uh, just the plastic reflector. Um, I didn't run any of the crease with the reflectors. But I should have, and I will be doing that soon. Um, and then this was the results. Actually, I think you already saw this. Oh, oh that was at a different uh, height. But 1500 uh, lux with no optics, 36,000 lux with optics. Um, you know, that gives you a very narrow spotlight, but uh, it also gives you a really long Goldilocks zone. So, it's uh, something to consider there. And I'm going to stop this video.